welcome to learning partner in this video we are going to complete the whole project in angular 17 will be from scratch up to the complete development obviously we will skip some of the part like basic CRUD operation is there right one for one component i will be taking but for another i won't be taking everything because if i same code is going to be there just api changes will be there right now coming back to project like the project is ticketing software so if you just google like ticketing tool so you can see so many different products are there which will per which will serve the purpose of the ticketing tool service now is also a big kind of a what do i say ticketing tool is there which most of the it companies uses but every, in every it company there is some tool which they use for raising some ticket right now where ticketing tool plays the role let's say you have an IT organization or any manufacturing industry or any type of organization, right? Where so many, let's say in thousands or lakhs employees are there. Let's say an employee enters into a company, he is working, right? He need help with his system. Like his system is uh, running very slow or he need a simple mouse or his uh, laptop is not uh, working properly. So you cannot call someone and ask him to help you. There is a system that you need to raise a ticket, right? That with the particular department, then that ticket will go uh, to particular employee, right? Let's say we need a new mouse, right? So that request, that ticket will go to that particular hardware department. It That ticket will be assigned to a particular employee. Then that employee will deliver us a mouse. Then our ticket will get resolved. Just like that ticket can be raised to HR department related to any appraisal, payroll department related to your any salary query or anything pf related anything it can be right so whenever you need to do some you know, whenever you need to ask something or you, you need to resolve something you need to go through the proper channel so this is what ticketing tool is going to be the role which is going to organize the structure now coming back to the flow diagram so let's say we have a login page now everyone is an employee the no, I mean, the employees who are going to work on you, work on your ticket, they are nothing but employees only, but they have some different role. So for now, we will consider them as an admin. Now, employee. So in employee login, uh, admin people will create your logins and everything, right? So in admin login, uh, employee creation, department creation, everything, basic current operation will be done in the admin login. Coming back to employee. So if you are an employee, if you logged in, you will see your dashboard. In dashboard, you can see like how many tickets you have raised, how many, are, how many of them are in progress, how many are closed and everything, basic statistic. Then you can create a new ticket. And you can see all the tickets you have created till now also. So you can see in employee login, he can create a new ticket. Once the ticket is created, it will go to the department head. Let's say we have created a ticket to the payroll department. So you, that ticket will go to the payroll department head whoever the payroll department head is there, it will land to his bucket. Then he will decide like from his department who is free, right? So he will assign that ticket to that particular employee from his department. So from the department head, he can see the new tickets. He will assign the ticket to particular employee from that particular department. Then the let's say that particular employee login, he can see the assigned tickets. He will start working on that ticket and he can close also. So this is just a simple flow. We are not going to have a full pledge application, but this is just a basic flow, which you will find in every application. Obviously, some more pages and some extra details will be there. But we are in this video, we are just trying to cover the basic flow. Even, even in service now, also same thing will be there, just in a more fledge and a detailed way. Now, I will explain the tables also, like how many tables are going to be there. So if you see, we are just going to have four table. First is department table. So here we are going to create all the departments, uh, including department head also, like who is leading that department. Then employee. All the employee information will, uh, will be stored into this table. Then uh, an extra thing is there that is about leaves. I'm not going to discuss in this uh, episode for that. Then we have ticket. So this is the table where we are going to store all the tickets. Now, these are the three tables only which we are going to need so with these three tables you can complete this whole flow now coming back to api 
So APIs are already developed. So in free API mini project.com, you can find all the APIs. Let me just minimize. So you can see here are the different employees like to uh, the current operation of uh, department, then employees, login page, live portal is also there, but I'm not going to cover into uh, cover this live portal into this video because our main focus is for the ticketing tools. Then we have some API for the tickets like uh, with filter also create new ticket, assign ticket, start request, close request, right? So these are the various APIs we are going to have. Now coming back to the Angular side. I have created an Angular 17 project. Let me just show you the package.json. So you can see 17 version is there. ng new, then the project name. Then uh, once it asks, it will ask like, do you need a server side rendering or not? So you can say no. Then the basic project is created. I have added a bootstrap also. So in angular.json, I'm adding, I have added bootstrap and the font awesome CSS. Now let's run the project. Uh, this project is kind of a detailed one. Here we are going to set up the architecture and everything, all advanced things. We will try to cover it. It will be a long video, but if you do this, you will have a proper knowledge considering all the advanced scenarios. We will try to do the interceptor, a sync pipe, then uh, reusable components, everything, whatever we can think of an advance that we will try to implement. So to run the project, we just have to use the command NGS. And one more thing like this video is not intended for the audience who are just starting with the Angular. So this might be a very high or it will, it is not, it won't be easy to grasp. But if you know all the basic, you are done with your all the basic topic, then you can surely start with this project. Let's run it. No colors four to double zero. So you can see by default this page will come. Now let's close this. Coming back to folder structure. So whenever we say uh, what do we say project setup. So what things we have to consider. So first is like we should have a constant file. There we will put all our constant data. We should not hard code anything anywhere. Everything should come from the constant file. Then reusable component. Then services. Environment files. Right? Just I'm just uh, taking the basic things. Then pipes, custom pipes custom pipe we should be able to create then we will try for custom directive also and obviously new features in angular 17 what are the new things we have got in angular 17 angular 17 support the old whatever uh, things we had in the old version that it supports but in addition it has some new features also like signals uh, to hide and show we have some another things right so that we will try to cover. So let's start with the project setup first. So in app folder, first I will create a core folder. Now core folder will contain the things which are related, which doesn't have UI. It will just service, class, uh, interface, auth guard and everything. So in core folder, first I will create a service folder. Services. Then we will need models folder. Here we will be creating classes and interfaces. Then guard folder I'm create, creating. Here we will create auth guard, can activate, can, can uh, deactivate. What are the guards we can use? Then constant file. Right. So in core folder, we are going to have, we are going to have four, four of these folders. Then we will have inside app folder only, we will have a pages folder. Pages folder will be responsible to store the components which we are going to access by routing. This won't be reusable component. Then I will create a folder. Sorry, in app folder, I will again create a folder that will be shared. Now, shared folder will have reusable components. So I will name it as widgets. Which is nothing but reusable component I will store into there. 
then I will have pipes. Then I will have directives. I might be forgetting something, but once uh, we move ahead, once I remember again, we will be keep adding, but basic structure will be like this. So in core folder, we will have constant file. So let's just create a constant file. So constant dot ts. Now here we have to create a constant file. So export. name of the file will be constant only now so in this constant file we are normally we will store the validation message api endpoints so many things we are going to store so let's say first i'm creating api api underscore end underscore point and here we are going to how we here we are going to store the all the api points Whenever you create a constant file, now the name in the constant should be, it's uh, what do we say, it's not uh, mandatory, but as a good programming practice, constant file, whatever the variable name you give, properties name you give, that should be in the capital case, with separated with underscore. So let's say, let's try one of the API. First API, let's say get department. So now, if you execute this, try it out, execute. Now you see in all my API, this is going to be constant up till this ticket slash because only one server is there. So up till this, this is going to be constant. So this we will put it into the environment folder, but these are nothing but my method name. These are going to be changed. Get department, add bulk, right? Whatever the things you can see, create department, update department, delete. These are nothing but methods. So this, these are the endpoints. So let's say get Sorry. Get department and value will be this. Right. So here we will keep on adding multiple endpoints. Let's add one more. Create department let's get the actual method name this method name will go over here like that we will keep on adding once we start making the api call just like this let's say we need the validation message also Now, why do we need to store it? Because in HTML, we hard code it. So rather than hard coding it, it should come from the uh, constant file. So we can create a constant. We can store all the validation, basic validation, like this is required, mean length is this. Just like that validation message, we can store here. So let's say first is required. Here we can say like this. Required. Now, just like that, you can keep on adding regular expression, whatever you, you cannot store. So this is about the constant file. So after the constant file, we can start with the services. But before service, we have to create the environment folder because there we are going to store our API, actual API URL. So on the project uh, roof level, you just need to open a new terminal. Now we are going to install environment. Uh, before Angular 16 or 15, I think, environment folder was part of the Angular project only. But now you have to explicitly install environment. So ng generate environments center Is it environments? Let's try. Yeah. So ng generate environment. So this command will generate environment folders. So you can see we have got the environment folder and there we got the environment and the environment 
dot development dot ts and after it this same entry will be added to the angular dot json over here now so environment folder is like uh, when we start any project we have different environment like development environment qa environment production environment ua environment according to the different environments with different server we might have apis also different because for every environment we will have database also different so obviously apis will be different so all the things which are different related to api this is nothing but constant because you can say it is nothing but constant but this constant file is related with the specific environment environment specific uh, constant we are going to store in the environment files so let's say here api underscore url and here we are going to store the api url means that will be up till here right so this is going to be constant all over so up till this this is going to be constant so same variable you need to create over here also like this so our environment file is done so after constant we have created environment then we have to uh, create a service folder first so right click now i'm going to create a service so ng generate service let's say master service i'm going to create master or department we just have one master only so department now we are creating a department service so in this service we are going to store all the api calls of my department component what are the component what are the services we are going to need that we are going to store it over here now so here first uh, obviously we have to make the api call right we are going to make the api call so now to make the api call we need http client module that uh, to be loaded right but in angular 17 we don't have app module so if might have seen we have dot no we have just app config.js so in angular 17 you don't have app module so but to use http client we need to import the http client module let's see that so in app config.ts in provider you need to write provider http client and here we need to pass let me just search it because i forgot how we used to do that once we get the error now then we know like wow we need to resolve that let me just search it so it is like this only in the providers you need to add provide http client now in the department service first we have to inject http client so private http colon http client now here i have to create the api calls which we are going to need for the department card so first api is will be get all department now this function is going to uh, return data type of observable because we are going to make api call so let me just first write that return this dot http dot get get api call is there now first we need the api endpoint but api endpoint we have stored in the app config.js right so environment dot api url after that we need to bind our constant right so constant dot now we need the import so let's just add that first api endpoint dot we need get department right so this will form our whole url the actual api endpoint then the method name and this method if you see on the gate it is returning the data type of observable so here you should write observable because this method is going to return data type of observable now coming back to the any when you know like what type of data you are going to get so if you see my api i get the data me all my api response is like this you will get an object in that object you will get three properties message result and data this is going to be constant response of all my api so for 
to handle this instead of creating as any we can create a model now so in model i will create a uh, interface let's say api models api dot model dot ts now here i will create an interface export interface api response and now what are the properties i need in my api response message result and the data so let's create those message this is going to be of data type string then result this is going to be data type of boolean and then data now data is dynamic so here you can specify as any now this interface we will use in our service now instead of any now i am going to know let's add the import first now i'm going to know like this function or this api call is going to return the data type of this so after get also we need to add the interface name so it will go over here so this should be your proper api call the this api call this function is returning a data type of observable along with this type right then after gate also you need to provide this so this is your proper api call so let's just uh, complete the remaining one also so in constant we are going to need the update and the delete so let's just complete instead of create it will be update and last will be delete let's just get the method name also create was there update let's copy then we need the delete one so now when we set the delete for delete we have to pass the id so it will url will be something like this up till id is equal to this we are going to need then the one whatever the parameter you need to pass that will be dynamic so it will be like this so you can see in the constant we have added four of our methods let's create the api call functions also now since and for the first time we have written and i have explained also but now i will just copy paste so this will be create new department now create new department is the post api so instead of gate it will be post for post api we need to pass two parameter url and the object right what data you are going to store so url will be instead of this create department and object now this function we are going to call from our component so from there we are going to send the object any again i will cover to this now instead of any we know like what kind of object we are going to send while creating so this is the object so let's create interface of this instead of interface let's create the what do we say class export class sorry department model and these are the properties we are going to have doesn't matter like you put uh, filled in the double quotes or not now instead of zero you need to pass the data type as number instead of string here also number and here date now if you see these are giving the error like it is not initialized so since this is a class so we can have a constructor right so every class will have a constructor doesn't matter where we, you are writing it so in the constructor you can just initialize this property new date i will initialize with new date then this dot department id will be initialized to zero because this is going to be primary key then department name with the initialization with empty string and department department head employee id is going to be with zero so this is how my department class is going to look like now this will go over here 
instead of any, this is going to be do over here. So once you complete everything, now then you will get to know like what, why we should we uh, we create the interface and the classes. You will get strongly typing strongly type data types everywhere. So create department after that. Update department. The API will be update department. So if you see the swagger for update, we have the put API. So here you should write instead of gate, you have to write put. And obviously you need to send the object, same object, what we have stored, what we are passing for the create, the same object we have to pass it over here also. Then last one is the delete department. Now it is delete. So when we deal with the HTTP calls, we basically have four API calls, gate, post, put, delete. Instead of delete. Now for delete department, we don't need to send the object, but if you see the constant, we have to provide the ID. So up till that, here it is there, then we have to provide the ID. So here we will have the parameter like ID, the data type will be number, and this ID we have to provide over here. So plus ID concatenation I'm just doing. So our service work is done. You can see. Now coming back to uh, service I have explained because I have created the constant and how we use the constant for that purpose I have created the uh, service but still we are left with the component page component creation so let's just close everything let's just get back to the basic pages creation whatever the pages we are going to need so constant is done guard we will create model and service folder is done now coming back to pages so if we have seen the what do we say flow diagram so how many components we are going to need so let's try that components so first will be employee so here in employee component we are going to do all the employee crud operation the department then we are going to need a login page once we do the login we are going to need one more parent component which will act as a parent page there we will have the navbar so i will name it as a layout Here we will keep our navbar. Then tickets page, new ticket page. So, and one dashboard. So these are the various components we are going to need. So let's create one by one. So right click on the pages folder, open in new terminal. So to create new component, the command is ng generate component. You can write the generate or component or the short form also. First component I'm going to create is the login. Let's enter. So in previous version, when you create the component, it used to create four files and it used to update the app module, but we don't have app module. So all the component in Angular 17 are by default standalone. So you can see standalone true is there. Means these are the independent actual reusable component wherever you need to use them you can import it and you can use it right after that then you you will need that layout component and extra component which will act as a parent component for the navbar let's enter let me just create the remaining one So as you can see, I have created all the components which we have discussed. Dashboard, department, employee, layout, login, new ticket, and the tickets component. Now, coming back to shared. So in shared component, what things we are going to need? So currently, we we once we start the development, then we will come to know like what directives and what pipes we are going to need. So for now, I'm keeping this folder as empty. And in visits also, we are going to uh, create the reusable component. But for now, I, for now, I will keep those as empty. Now, coming back, to the, coming back to the pages folder. So first, we have created the component, right? After creating component, you need to create the routes. So we have app route.ts. Here, routing, we have to create all the routes. So routes, coming back to the routes, like first route you need to create will be the default route. Right, so path will be empty, then redirect to, that will be redirect to the login. 
and path match strategy you need to pass with the value full. So this is going to be my default route. Means in the URL, if we don't have anything, it will redirect to the login page. Then we have to create the login page route. Login and the component we have to render it will be login component. Then again, one empty path will be there. But now for this is empty path, we have to render the component that will be layout. Now, after login, whatever the components we are going to need, all those components will go in the children of this layout component. So here we have to create all the other components which we have created means all the component which will be accessible only after login. So all those component route we have to create inside the children of the layout component. Again path. So let's say first component will be dashboard. Component. Dashboard component. Comma. Like that I have to create the remaining component also. So I have created the remaining routes. So just pay attention. This is a default route. This is a login route. Once we do the login, then this component will be activated. Means in the layout component, we are going to have the navbar and all the component which we are going to access after the login will be part of the layout component children. This should be your routing file. Now, so in app component, if we are not logged in, means by default login page is there. So for the login page, app component will be my parent component. So here we are going to need router outlet. Now, just pay attention in the router outlet, this is not giving us error because in app.component.ts, we have router outlet imported and it is added in the import section. Now the rule goes in Angular 17 like, whatever you use, you need to import it. Previously, we did a, it was not necessary to use the uh, to import the router outlet or router link, but now you if you have to use the router outlet, you need to import it. Even if router link you have to use, you need to import it. Now, so this variable we are not going to need. So let's close it. Now, if we save all and let's try to run the application. Okay, we have it running. Let's just save all. So by default, our login page should be visible. So you can see if I just if I press uh, just uh, in the URL, if I just enter the localhost 4200, as we have created a default route, it will redirect to the login page, right? Now we need to find the login page. So login page, HTML, CSS, code page. Let's just go over there and let's try to find the easy one. Very basic. Which should we do? Which one? Let's try next. Let's try this if it is simple one. Let's try this one. So now first we are going to need is the HTML code. So from this container, we are going to just copy. Let's go to the login component. Let's paste it over here. Let's just format it one more time. After that, we are going to need the CSS. So let's go over here. Just copy from the body. You can use any 
login page just don't waste so much time into finding the correct login page because the functionality is important ui is not that much important but you should focus on the functionality right so let's just try to save okay one more thing so here body was there but we don't have the body right so we can wrap whole our login page into a parent con div div class parent so that that whatever the css we had for the body we can append it to the always try to format it and this we will replace instead of body now it will be parent so let's just save with this the same login page should be visible yeah so same login page whatever we have seen in the code pane same we are able to see so login page is done now here we need to integrate the login api so let's try so you can see i have just created one api uh, some employee we are already created so login api we need to pass these two fields uh, email id and the password so let's again if any uh, whenever you are creating uh, what do we say new api call first you have to go to the constant file in the api endpoint you need to add that endpoint this is log login and the endpoint will be login only right now either you can create one more service right but uh, uh, I'm just going to create a employee service and in that only I will keep the login function as well. So in generate service employee because on, for user related we don't have anything like forgot password and everything reset password nothing only login pin is there. So I'm going to create an employee service and in that I'm going to create login function. So here private HTTP colon HTTP client right now I'm going to just copy paste this things i go i need so post api i'm going to need so i will just use that copy paste if you have not seen the previous part please do watch it in the department service i have explained everything how do you uh, do this uh, constant and everything now just like the department again we are going to need one more const uh, model so let's go to the api models Either you can create multiple classes files also, but or you can store it in a single file also. Since this is a very small project, so all the classes and interface I will create it over here only. Again, just to save the time, I'm just copy pasting. Here it will be login model. Now things I have in the login object. So email ID, this will go over here and the password only two fields we have to send right this will be again with empty now so in the log employee service instead of this department we have to pass the login model again constant was needed login model import also needed now instead of this create department we have to use our login constant so this should be your uh, login api function we have created in the employee service now coming back to login page so here first we need to create the object so that will be let's say login obj now data type we have already created the class so that only we have to use login model right now this is a class so we need to initialize it so new login model like this you can initialize it now this login object we have to bind to the form using ng model so we don't need this on click square bracket round bracket ng model and we have to pass our 
object dot. So see the benefit of creating class and interface. You get the IntelliSense. If you create that uh, mod object with the any, you won't get that IntelliSense, right? So this is the benefit of creating classes and interfaces. Now, so if you see, we are getting the error like cannot bind ng model because we have to import forms model. Now I said like we don't have app model. So here only you need to add the forms model. So wherever you have to use the ng model in that component in the import section, you need to add the forms model. So now you can see error is gone. Now on click of login, we don't need this. We don't need this also. Instead of submit, let's make it button. Click on login. Let's create this function. So here in this function, we are going to make the API call. But before making the API call, obviously we need to create the object of that service. With dependence injection, we need to inject that. So private employee EMP service employee service. Right. So once we select import, it will be automatically added. So here, this dot emp service dot only one method is there login. And to this method, we need to send the object login object dot subscribe round bracket round bracket result colon. Now, the response type we are going to get, we have already created, right? So that only we have to use it. So this is the response. Now this will go over here. We need to add the import arrow function. Now here you should, in each API call, just apart from the gate, you should add ifs and else statement. So in result dot result property, you need to check. So all my API will return the same object. And in the result property, you will get true if the API call is success. If it is error, you will get it false. And in the message property, you will get the error. So this code should be everywhere. Then I'm using alert. Since we don't have any, we have not installed any third party library. So I will be using alert only. So here I'm, uh, after login just for now, I'm showing the message like login success. But in ideal application, we don't show any pop-up once we do the login because it is irritating why do we have to click click on okay now after login after login we if login is success we directly navigate and in else we have to show the message we get from the api side so result dot message thing now once we do the login log if login is success in the data we get the object that data we need to store to the local storage so local storage dot set item and let's create a ticket data and here whatever the date object we get user detail we get that we need to store to the local storage but while storing the data to the local storage we should only store data into the string format so to convert object to the string format we have to use this on dot stringify and we need to pass result dot data over here and after the login and after the local storage we have stored we have to navigate to the dashboard page Right. So to navigate again back, we need the router service. So private router now here this dot router dot navigate by URL method we have to use and we have to pass the URL. So once user is successfully logged in, then we have to navigate to the dashboard page. So this URL we have to pass into our over here right let's add a debugger to check the code for the first time let's save all let's check if it is everything is correct yes it is all the uh, compiled code compiled successfully now we have to use this email id you can create your employee and then you can use it but for now i'm doing like this password 112233 let's just inspect on click of login, you can see our API call function got triggered. Now in the login object, you can see whatever we have typed in the form, that data we have got successfully stored into our object. I'm adding a debugger on line number 25 or so. Now in the login, we have to click over here. Let's just add it over here. Continue. 
So once we hit once we hit this function from this service and we are passing the data also. So here in object you get the data. And here you can see we have got the API URL up to tickets. Then we have our login. So this after that login, so our complete URL will be formed like this. And we are sending the object. So let's continue. Now in the network, you can see the it is successful. So whatever the response we have got that you, we are getting over here, you can see in the data, we have got the whole object and result properties too. So login success alert pop-up will be there. Then we are storing the data into the local storage. Let's go to the application. So currently we don't have anything in the local storage, but once I save, continue, let's go to application and you can see whatever the data we have got from the API, we have stored that employee ID is 15, the user number, everything. Continue. And after that, you can see we are successfully navigate to the dashboard. Let's try one more time. Now we will try with the wrong password. Let's just add something. Login. Now you can see we will get the error. So now in the result, you can see result is false. And in the message, you get the wrong credential. Right? So that's why with all the API call, this code should be there if and else block with the result check. Now in the dashboard is looking like the simple page. So coming back to the layout component. So we have created the layout component. Here we have to keep our nav bar. So let me just get a proper nav bar rather than using the standard bootstrap one. So for sidebar means the nav bar, I have simply searched responsive sidebar HTML CSS code pen. And this is one of the proper and the basic one I have got. It will add ahead also. So let's try to use this. So I will just copy paste the div. Let's copy. Now this we have to put into the layout component. After that, we need the CSS. So let's copy everything. Let's put the CSS into this. Again, the same thing what we have did. So let's replace that with parent. And this parent, we have to create one more div. In the container, we have to put it inside over here. And we have the sidebar. After that, we will need one more div. And here we are going to have router outlet. So now you can see here we are getting the error. That is because we have to import the router outlet. then we will then we won't get the error so let's just save all and let's check if we get the proper nav bar let's try to log in i be seeing wrong credential one one two two three three login login success it is there, but something is incorrect. Let's see why. Minimum height with 100%. Let's try to remove this. And let's see how does it look now. It is not taking the full, full screen. Okay, because of this container, we don't need this container. Width as hundred percent and height let's try yeah it is there but just because of the container it is uh, providing some spacing because container class is in our bootstrap also. So instead of container, let's try to remove this container as we don't need it.
So here we can see we have got that particular. Why it is not taking the hundred percent width? Let's check. Okay, parent we have not done. So this class we have to replace like this. Uh, margin padding 100 VH with this flex. It was looking proper over here. That's why I chose that. I don't like wasting time like this. Uh, let's try to find another one. Let me just try first, then I will explain. Okay. So simple one I have got. So this is what I have selected. So you can see the output. Without doing anything, I got that. Just the icons are not coming, but uh, we have already installed the font awesome. So instead of fast, let's make it far because this that was the old version. Now, Icon should come. Let's try. Still, it is not coming. Why is it so? Want us some four point one? First was for the home. Let's find the home icon. Far far home. Let's copy same only. My icon is not visible. Why oh, it is coming? Let me just check my angular.json if I have not added it or not. It is there. Okay, so let it be. Don't let's not waste the time. Let's remove this. So here. So first we'll be, let's say, dashboard. Then we will have employee. So now, instead of href, we have to use the router link, right? So to use the router link also, you need to import it. So here, router link, you need to import. And then you can write. And here, we have to pass the path name. Let's just close. Whatever the routes we have, that we will just enter over here. So, dashboard, it will go over here. Let me just copy. Let's replace it. Then we have employee. Then we have department, then we have tickets, and the new ticket. For now, I'm just keeping everything over here, but uh, rule-wise, some things are going to be hidden. We'll just save and check. If, uh, if we click on the particular page, that component should be loaded so if i click on the employee you can see here employee component is getting loaded right wherever i'm clicking that particular component is getting loaded over here in the router outlet section right so we have uh, done the login implementation mm, we have shown we have properly created the navbar also but once we do the login we have stored the login detail into 
local storage. So we have, we have to show the logged in username, like which user is logged in. So at the bottom here, we can show the logged in username. So let's read the local storage data into layout component. So here I'm just creating one variable that will be logged. data colon now instead of any let's check what was the response we have got from the login api that will be nothing but an employee only so this was an object so let's create an interface of that now we have a uh, ready uh, some sites are also there which will convert json into typescript file json to ts so this is the site. You just need to paste the model, whatever the JSON you have. And then it will let you create the proper interface. So let's copy this. Now we have to go to the, our model folder. So here again, I will create a export class employee model. The properties I have. And again, constructor I'm going to need. So constructor, let's just initialize this dot employee ID, email ID is equal to empty, like that. This dot contact number is equal to empty. Let me just complete this. So I have created the class. Now this class name, I have to provide it over here, new. We need the import. So whenever you have to create a variable and you are going to store object into that, see what are the fields you have, create a class or the interface. Now in constructor, right? In the constructor on the page load, we need to read the data from the local storage. So let's create a construct const local data is equal to local storage dot gate item. So we need to we need to pass the exact key what in which we have stored. So in the login page, we have stored the data. So let's go over there. So this was the key. So this only we have to use while reading the data. So while storing, we have used the set item method. Now while reading, we have to use this. Now, whenever you read the data from the local storage, you should add a null check. So local data not equal to null. Then you need to assign that data to our log data is equal to but when storing the data into local storage we have stored the data into the string format so now we have the data object into string format so again to convert it back we have to use the json dot parse method and we have to pass the local data so now it will again convert the data which, which, which we have stored into the string format again to the object one. Now in log data, we will have the logged in username. So this, we will show it over here in the interpolation dot email ID, we will show it. So let's just save. So here you can see it is visible, but we just need to get rid of those icons. So here you can see it is visible. Now, we are going to need the logout button also, but that we will uh, complete after some time. So this will be home or let's here we will, let's uh, add an service tracker, just our application name. So here it is visible. Okay, it is very long one. So let's take it. That is very small one. Now, first page we are going to complete is the department page. So in this department page, we are going to complete the CRUD of the department. Means we are going to do the uh, new department creation, show all the departments we have, then update and the delete, all the four operations. So we already had created the services at the start. So in department service, you can see all the services are over there. Model also we have created. Now we will start with designing the UI. 
So let's go into the department HTML. Now, to uh, perform the crowd operation, I will use the card structure. So on the right side, in the left side, we will show the list of the department. On the right side, we will have the form. So I will just create the structure with row dot call eight dot card dot card header dot bg success just the card card structure i'm creating and here we will let's say h or let's directly show department list and then we are going to need card body these are just the bootstrap classes i'm using and here we are going to show the table so table class table table hyper b o r d r e d important then here we are going to need a t head tr then th we are going to need serial number so in the department we don't have that much things just the department name and the department head name name let's make it department name and then we are going to need the we need to display the department head head and we need the action button also so th and let's say action just like this call it i'm going to just copy this whole thing and put it over here after call it remaining is the call four but here create form will be there create new department so here we will have the form instead of table here we are going to have the form so dot row dot call let's say or 12 only because we just have two field department name and the department head so here label name and we are going to read the text box so let me just complete the form designing then you can see the complete thing form hyphen control class we need to add just like that i will just copy paste and here we are going to need the drop down of the employee because we need to select the department head like which employee is the department head uh, which employee is leading this department select department head and here option will be there and after this i'm just going to create one more row and here we are going to have two buttons save and the cancel reset just like that again one more button for the save we will just add a success uh, color to this And let's add a text center class. So let's just save and check if UI is looking in proper. So this is what my UI should look like. Just for the drop down, this class is missing. So let's just add this for drop down. You can use form select class. Right. Now we just need some spacing from the for the button. So PT3. Let's just save. Now you can see just the basic UI should look like this. Here we will we will show the department list and here we will have the form on click of edit and the new everything will be over here. Now on the page load, first we need to call the departments. So over here. Obviously, we are going to uh, need the forms module also. So let's add forms module. 
then we are going to create uh, ser service instance of the department. So private department service Now on the page node, we are going to make the API call. So we are going to need on in it. So on in it, here we have to add it. Then we have to implement it also. So implement on in it. And once we implement, we need to add the ng on in it function. We will create one method which will be responsible to make that API call. So load department round bracket curly bracket enter so here we are going to call the api which uh, which what do we say which we are uh, from this function we are going to call the particular service function so this dot department service dot get all department dot subscribe so we are going to subscribe to whatever the response we get result colon again the same thing all my API response are going to get the same data. So login, sorry, the API response model, we have to use it over here. In, instead of the any, we have to use that. Now we need to subscribe. Now this is the gate API. Even if we no, even if we come across an error, we get an empty array. So here, if it is optional, like you should add that if statement or not, but whatever the response I get, we can directly store that also. So I'm going to need one more variable that will be department list colon. Now the department object. Let's see if we have created the department. Yes, so this object we have created. So let's paste it over here. And this is going to be array. So like this, and let's initialize with empty array. We need the import also. Whatever the response we get, that we need to store it over here. So this dot department list is equal to uh, res dot data. In data, we will get the array. And this function we have to invoke from the ng on in it. Like this. So let's just save and check if we can see the APA call in the network. So if we land to the department page, so on the page load, you can see the API response. So let's check the API response. So, so many department. Okay. Uh, one thing we have missed that is department head name. So this property we are going to need. Well, in the list API only, you are going to get that property. So let's just add that. Let's initialize that with empty. Right. So here in this variable, you are going to get all the data of the department. Let's just show that in the table. So just like the T head, we are going to need a T body. And inside that TR, we have to iterate this TR. So we have to use star ng4 over here. Let department of department list, whatever the number of TH we have created over that same number of TD we have to create. Let's just copy paste. Four TDs, four TH were there. So four TDs are here. Now here, first serial number is there. So to get the serial number here, let SR is equal to index you need to create. And in the first TD, you need to show the serial number. So SR plus one, because serial number index will start from the zero. So that's why plus one I'm doing. And here we are going to have object department dot it is not suggesting okay so this is giving errors now again one more thing in the angular service so like if we have to use the ng4 and the ng if you need to add the common module in our import section so here you need to add common module then only it will you can use that so now if we press enter, you can see it is suggesting now because previously on the ng4, it was giving the error. So dpt name, you have to show it over here. Then add 
after that department head name and here we are going to have edit and the delete button so button class btn btn sn small button i'm taking then the color btn success so first button i will be creating for edit and the next button i will be creating for the delete so delete one and for the delete let's just give a danger color let's just save all and let's check it so on the page load we will have the api call and once we get the data that data will be visible so you can see the data is visible now if you pay the attention some department head is, name is not coming somewhere it is coming but somewhere it is not coming so that we can handle now we have a requirement like if we don't have anything in the table we can show like not available or hyphen hyphen so for that let's create a custom pipe so in the shared folder we have the pipe folder already created so right click on the internet integrated terminal now we have to create our custom pipe so let's give the custom pipe name as na means not available so ng generate pipe na let's enter now this pipe will be responsible to check like if we have either value will be of the three time null undefined or the empty so all three value we will check if not then we will return the value so let's go to na pipe so in the pipe we have the transform method now we are not going to need the parameter so here we have to simply check if value instead of the and it, let it be unknown only if value not equal to null or sorry and value not equal to undefined it is not undefined also and value not equal to empty only these three combinations we can have either value can be null undefined or the empty if it is not null if it is not undefined or it is not equal to empty then we will return the value as it is but in else we will return a string value that string value will be an a not available now we know the data type right so uh, we don't know look what kind of data we are going to get because this is a reusable pipe or in all the tables we are going to use that so for that i am keeping unknown as as it is so in the pipe also you can see standalone is true because pipe uh, just like the components also pipe will have uh, pipes are also now a standalone right so to use this pipe we have to in import it also so here if i use the na pipe directly let's see like i'm also not sure how we can handle that so over here we need to add na pipe so now it is saying like no okay we need to import in the department component it has suggested so in the import section only we have to add that so you can see and a pipe is added over here and then we can use it now if we save wherever we had that empty now there we will show that na na so here you can see not available is coming wherever we didn't get any data from the api side we are showing na na so we have created a one custom pile custom pipe also let's just add a spacing over here mx2 and let's make uh, them in the center so class t center so one thing is done on the page load we have called our get department api and that department we have shown in the into the table next thing if you see the api the create one so we have to pass the department head employee id so this is nothing but the employee what whatever the employee we have out of that employee one employee will be the department head so we need to call the get employees method because whatever the data we get from the employee that we need to display over there right so let's call this now we need to create the constant also so let's this is a new api so obviously we need to go to the constant 
it will be get employee the method name will be get employees let's create a method in the employee service we have created the employee service get all just let me just copy paste so that we will save our time just the method name we have to change instead of post this is my gate api and we don't need the object instead of login it will be get employee right everything will be same now on the department page load we have to call two api load department and the get employee also load because in the department head we have to show the employee list then he will select the user will select like who is going to be the head of this department so that's why we need to call the department so here again second service object we have to create emp service employee service so here employee service dot get all employee api call we have to make it is saying it has the argument we don't need it let's remove that now whatever the data we get from the employee that also we need to store it somewhere so now here we will use here we will try to use the async pipe instead of creating variable and then assigning it to the drop down let's create an observable uh, we are going to use the async pipe. So now to store the data into the async pipe, first we have to create the observable. So I'm creating observable employee. Uh, normally when we create the observable, we put you know, asterisk, uh, sorry, dollar symbol at the end. So just to make, uh, just to, uh, as a, what do we say, good programming practice, we do like that. Observable. And the data type we are going to we are going to get is the employee object. So that will be we have created the employee list. Yeah, this model. So we are going to get the data of the employee model. Now it will say like it has no initializer. Let's. Uh, Let's make it undefined at the by default. Now in the constructor or the ng on it, you can do like this employee object is equal to now instead of making this API call and subscribe, you just provide this to over here. Why it is saying now. So you can see here we have specified the data type as employee model, but our this function returns the data of type object. So we just need to change it. So employee service. Let's create another function. Same one, but the return type will be something else. Instead of get employee list. And instead of this API response, I will return the data of type employee model only. So for that here, like that now we have to use the map operator also over here so once we get the data we need to add the pipe operator and we have to use the map now the response will be this it is showing the error one more round bracket we have missed return res dot something we have missed pipe then map Employee of this is missing in the properties of employee response. Let's make it any.
here we have to return res dot data so here i'm just providing it any because it is uh, we are from api we are going we are getting the object right but from that object we are just going to return the particular data property so that's why I'm, uh, it was it, it was getting confused like we have this so that's why here only i have kept that kept that as any but this api this function is going to return the data only means actual data whatever the data we get not the whole object so now this function we can call it over here then we will get that error you can see now error is gone because this this function is going to return the data type of the list of the employee model now this employee observable we can use it on the drop down so here we have to use the star ng for let emp of my observable name and the pipe that will be async pipe we have to use like that and here we have to bind the properties emp dot employee id we have to bind but while displaying we need to display employee name so emp dot employee name we have to display so let's just save and let's see if drop down is coming properly or not so here you can see drop down is coming and in the option you we have uh, value might be binded properly so you can see whatever the employee id is there we have binded it now on click of save we need to call our save api so let's create click on save let's create this function so here this dot department service dot create new department and we need to pass the object so this dot department object we have not created object oh so we need to create the object also right because we have a form so we need to bind the object also so same like that the epa department obj the data type will be department is equal to let's initialize that and this we have to bind to our form with ng models square bracket round bracket ng model dot here department department name will be over here and at the department head department head emp id will be over there like that now to the object we have to send the department object then dot subscribe from bracket res colon api response model and here we need to add that if and else block if result dot result is true then only we will show alert like department created and once department is successfully created again we need to call the load department also so that latest department will be visible and in else block we will show the error whatever we get from the api so res dot message save api call is there let's save all and we will test it if it department is getting created so currently you can see we have 12 department so let's just try to create one new let's add a hardware department let's say wiki is the head of the department on click of save you can see create department api's call is there but it is saying like department name already present let's see why so we have sent the department name as hardware let's see if we have the hardware also yes so here you can see hardware is already created that's why in the api response we have got false and in the message we have got the error that's why that if and else block is very important so let's say software installation department let's click on save so now you can see department created success because we might have got true over here and once uh api call was success then get department call was also there 
So here you can see the latest department is already here. Now we have we have to do the edit and the delete. So now in the table we have created the edit button. So here now there are two things. Now it is just a small API. Whatever the data we need to display in, on click of edit that is already available in the table only. But we have an API also. I think we don't have API to get the API. So we have to get the data from the table only. So let's create click function on edit. And for on edit, we need to pass the department object. So whole department object I will be passing. Let's create this function. Now for this function, I'm going to get the data so item that will have the data type of employee department only. So it will go over here and this dot department object is equal to item. Whatever the data we get from the front end that we need to assign it to the department object. Let's just save and check. Now, when we do the update, now update is a two part. First edit, on click of edit, we need to display that form uh, data in the form and on click of update, we will actually update the API. So let's say if I click on software, so you can see wherever I click, right? The data is getting visible wherever i have the department head that is getting selected so here you can say okay like that now on if we are uh, if we have clicked anywhere in case of edit one so that what do we say uh, instead of save it should be the update button that we can be uh, that for that we need to add a condition to show the update button so let me just get the update button. Let me just create the update button first. This will be update and the new function will be on update. Now in the department object, if we click on the edit, we will get the ID. So now star ng if we have to use department object dot department ID equal to equal to zero. If department ID is equal to equal to zero, then we can know like this is going to be the new form. So save button will be visible. But if it is not equal to zero, means on click on click of edit, obviously ID will be there. So in that case, update button will, will be visible. Let's create this function first. Let's just save and check. So if we click on the edit, now you can see update button is visible. And we have to write that uh, reset thing also. On click of reset, we need to reset the object. Reset. Let's create this function. In the reset, we just need to initialize that whole object one more time. So the same thing like that. We are just reinitializing this object. Now, on update, we need to make the API call. So I will just copy this code over here. Instead of create department, it will be nine. Now, update department. Department, instead of created, it will be updated success. Let's just save and check if we are able to update it. So the last we have created software installation. Let's click on edit. Now it is visible over here. Instead of software installation, software and installation i'm making just i'm adding in and on click of update you can see department updated success and the same why oh, it is not visible let's just check what went wrong because new name is not there let's click on edit software installation let's make it to network on click of update yeah, update department is there. Response also true. The new is also there. But the old value is only visible. Might be API is not working. Let's check the response. Let me just check the database. My update API might not be working, but by the time well, you will see the video, it will be working.
it is not getting changed. I will check the API, but the code will be same as it is. Now let's check the delete one. So on click of delete also, we need to make the API call just like the delete, right? So I will just copy and here it will be on delete. Now to delete, uh, delete we, we don't need to sell the whole object because for the delete API, we just need to send the ID. So that's why from here also I'm sending the only ID. So let's create this function. Now, once we click on the delete now, we have to show one more pop-up, like just a confirmation, like are you sure want to delete or not? So for that, I will use the basic pop-up we get from the JavaScript. So that will be is delete just a variable I'm creating, confirm box. And here we can send the message, are you sure? want to delete and if user once we show the pop-up now we will get okay and the cancel button if user say okay then we will get true in this variable if it is true then only we will make the api call let's copy this code api call code now instead of update it will be delete department and for the delete department we just need to send the id that we are going to get from the parameter so this we will pass it over here delete department deleted success let's okay, just save and check if de delete is working so let's check the last one if i click on the delete now you can see we have got that confirmation message if i click on cancel let me just show the See, nothing is happening. No API call is there. Let me try it again, right? But now if I click on OK, you can see API call is there with the ID department 37. And once we, uh, after the delete API call, again, get a department API call is there. So you can see the record has been deleted. So this is how we have to do the CRUD operation of the department. So with this, we have completed our department basic CRUD. Next thing, we will start with the employee. So after the department list CRUD operation all done, we have to move to the employee registration. So in the employee page, we have to do the registration. Now in the department page, we have shown the data into the uh, table format, right? But in the employee, we will try to uh, try to display the records in the card format so that we will cover most of the scenarios. and. In Angular 17, instead of ng4, we have at the rate for loop. So that we are going to use. So let's start with the employee page. Now the API we uh, we are going to need is get employees. This is the API which uh, get us all the employees. Then on edit, we have to integrate this get employee ID. Then create employee, update employee, and the delete employee. This uh, get employees by department ID is going to be needed in the another page. So let's start with, let me just close. So in the employee component, first we have to start. So before uh, starting with the, let me just complete the UI design first. So let's go over here as we have done in the first component. We will start designing over here also call it. Inside that I will need a card, dot card, header, dot BG, success. Then after the card, I need card body. Here we are going to have title, so that will be employee list. And here we are going to show the multiple cards. Now let's just copy this and paste it over here with call four. And this will be new employee form. Here we are going to have the form. So let me just design the basic uh, employee form. So this is going to be our UI. So here we will show the employee list in the form of card. And this is going to be our employee form. So now let's see the object of create employee. So this is an object. So employee ID is nothing but a primary key. So we don't have to concern about that. 
employee name, text box, contact number, again, text box, email ID, text box, department ID. Now we have a department ID. Now we need to get all the department and show whatever the departments we have in the drop down. So here you can see select department. Here we need to show the departments we have created. So here we need to make the API call. Now in service, department service, we already have created the get all department. So this is the benefit of creating service. Now we don't have to again write the API call. Already API call is already created. Now we just have to integrate that service and call that particular employee. So constructor, private department, Again, uh, we can make use of you make an, we can make use of an async pipe. So I'm just going to create an observable department list with dollar colon observable. Now we know like department data is going to be there. Department model. Let's see the model name. So department was that. Let's instead of any, I'm just going to use the model we have created. Now it will be saying like it is not initialized. So let's add that undefined also. Now the data we are going to get. So in the constructor, this dot department list is equal to department service dot get department. That's it. Something is wrong. Why is it not a Okay. So we need another makeup because this API, this function is returning data type of API response. So we have to create one more method which will get us the actual data. So let's create another function in the service. Just like this, where we have to map and pass the particular array. Get department list. API response, API response. Map we have to add. Right. Now instead of that, this function, now we are returning the data actually. From the API, we are getting we are getting the object. So from that we are just returning the data. Now this we can use it over here. Now it returns the data. Still, why it is saying? Are we missing something? No, here we need to add this department. Okay. Now, the response type of the get department list is nothing but department. Now it won't show the error. Still it is showing. Let's see department object. Okay. So here, here we have created simple object. It should be array. Now, in the department list observable, we are going to get the data. So that we will integrate on the department dropdown. So it will be inside this form. So here, OPT, and here we have to use the for loop. Now, instead of the normal ng for, we can make use of the new for loop we have got in, uh, in the Angular. So that will be at the rate for, and here, we have to write on the dollars or sync pipe. Now to use the sync pipe, obviously it will come from the common module. So we have to import that also. So here, common module, we have to integrate. Now error is gone. And this option will be inside the at the rate form. Just like the uh, at the rate ng4, we used to iterate on the particular element, but now just like on in React also, we have the same structure. So, uh, and track by will increase the performance. Instead of this, we will track by department item dot department ID. And here we have to bind the department ID in the property binding. So item dot department ID. And while showing, we need to display the department name. So item dot department name we have to show like this it will be there so this is the new for 
loop we have in angular 17 so make sure like if you are working if you have created the angular 17 project so rather than going for the ng4 try using the new things we have got let's just save and check if we are able to see the department in the department drop down yes so here you can see we have got the department now coming back so on the page load we have done first api call that is loading the department next is we have to show the employees list so let's see if we have created the employee service was created get employee method is also there now we can get uh, we can integrate that service in our function so on ng on init implements on init okay first we need to import it over here on the page load we are going to make that api call so i'm just going to implement on init Once we do that, it will ask for ng on init to implement. One more function, load all employees. Right, here I'm going to, first again, we need to create the employee service. So private EMP service, employee service. Now here, this dot EMP service, dot get all employee this is the api call we are going to make dot subscribe dot now let's see if we have created the object for the employee no i think so these are the properties we get let's check the get employees so these are the properties we get in the object so let's just copy these properties now let's create the interface for that in api dot model dot ts employee ID contacts so yeah we have already created so let's use this instead of result it will be this and with array because we are going to get no sorry uh, this function is normally returning the api response so we have to add api response model dot subscribe Sorry, arrow function whatever the response we get that we need to store it also so let's create the variable where we are going to store the employee list colon now here we have to use the employee model is equal to i'm initializing with empty let's add the import of this also so this dot employee list is equal to res dot data and this we have to initiate on the ng on it. So it will go over here. Now, whatever the date employee list I got, that will be in this variable. So now this, I have to bind it over here on the card. So you can see I have created these cards. On this call for, I have to iterate. So I'm going to use normal ng4. So let item of this variable. Let's remove this static one. Now inside this, you can see here we have to display the employee name. So here item dot employee name. So see, this is the benefit of uh, creating models and the interface. You get everything IntelliSense. You don't, you are, you are not going to make the spelling mistake and everything, right? After that. So after phone, we have to show the phone number. So item dot contact number. Here we have to show the email ID. So item dot email id uh, after phone contact number here what we are going to show department name so for department name let's try something let's use the server icon and here we will show the department name so item dot department name okay that property is not available let's just add that dept name let's initialize that and this department name will go over here and after at the last we have to show the role right let's just save all 
let's see on the page load we will make that api call and we can see the data so here you can see we have got the data available but now if you see here we are going here we are going to add an additional functionality if you see the viewport we are just able to see the sixth record because some space is getting used by this form so i we can hide this form on the button click and based on the requirement we will show it so for that here we will add a add button and here we will add a close button on close this will get hidden and this will take the whole space and on click of add this will get uh, less space and the form will be visible so let's write that functionality so for that we are going to need one more variable is emp form visible let's make it data type with boolean initialize with false now this variable i'm going to use let me just now this call for means the form will be visible only if this variable is true right now if you see we won't get it let me just save the both file so since that variable is false, so you can see we, we are not able to see the form. So if form is not visible, we have to make this card full screen. Means instead of this call 8, we have to add call 12. So let's get rid of the st static class. Now it will be dynamic. So star ng class. Now the condition will be if this variable is true. Is, if this variable is true, then we have to add this class otherwise this class so if variable is true we have to add call it otherwise call 12 means it will take the whole space let's just see now so currently you can see we don't have the form visible so it is taking the full screen now in that we are going to need a button so let's just add a row call employee list will go over here Here we will create a button, btn, btn, sm, btn, success, it will be add new. And on this button click, we have to just change that variable value. So click, I'm just going to change the variable value to true. So no need to, what do we say, create a function and do that. On the HTML only, I'm just changing it. Just like this. In the second card also, we are going to need the same structure over here also. The title will go over here. And it will be, instead of add new, it will be close button. And we, in this, we are going to just change the variable to false. So let's just check the whole functionality. Mm, let me just change the color name and it will be text. And instead of prior success, let's make it primary. Let's just do the same thing over here. Text hyper end so that it will align to the right side. Now you are, here you can see we have the add new button. So if we click on add new, you can see the side form is visible and it has shrink the space. Like this, uh, this was the functionality. And if we close it, it is getting again the full width. Right. Now let's just add a space over here because PT2 like that now we need to concentrate on the form so first we need to create the object right so this was a form we have already created the uh, class of that so let's create the object first so here this was the employee obj data type will be employee with new initialize it because that is a class and we need to bind this employee object to our field. So that will be over here. So in all the elements, we are going to bind ng model dot employee name. Now, since we are using the ng models, so obviously it makes uh, necessary to import the forms module. Forms module then that error will go away 
just like that i will just copy paste then we will change the properties mapping Over here department id will be there password okay one more role drop down is there i will explain the role once we uh, start implementing or hiding the things based on the role so currently in our application we are going to have three roles employee admin department employees who are going to work on the tickets and the department head just to identify like this employee is a department head now role is there password now we have a male and a female drop down so here we need to add the name property so that they will act as a group here same thing here also same thing and we need to bind the value also value male and here value will be female employee name employee name sorry this will be gender and this will be email id contact number right so basic api college now uh, basic we have created the object and that object we have binded to our form now on click of save we need to call our api so right click on save emp let's create this function in the service we need to write the api call function as well because we haven't written that so let's go to the employee service here we need to create an method which is going to be create employee api call so that will be let's say create employee now api endpoint also we are going to need so we will go to the constant just like the get employee we are going to need a create employee constant constant always should be in the capital case just keep in a habit of that so this is the url i will just copy paste so that i don't make the swelling mistake this will go over here now in the employee service instead of get employee now we have to use create employee instead of gate this is going to be my post api so post and once we convert it to post as post required two parameter object and the uh, what do we say url and this object we will pass it as a second parameter after comma so you can say this is my first url and second will be the object now this create employee function we have to integrate on this button click so here this this dot employee service dot create employee method and for this method we need to pass the object so this dot employee object we need to pass we have to subscribe api response arrow function and here we are going to add the if statement because uh, result property will display like employees created success or not so that's why result dot result if it is true we will show the alert like employee created success and once employees created success again we need to call the load employees method this and in the else we are going to show the error so in else block in alert only we will show the error so res dot message whatever the message we get from the api that we are going to display so let's just save all and let's see if we are able to create the employee so on click of add new we get the form let's try search in do we have such in no let's add a dummy mobile number email id search in at the red dummy dot com let's enter a mail password let's enter one one two two three three let's enter a uh, let's select the design as a department select rule let's uh such is going to be just the admin department employees so i'm selecting admin department employees now let's debug on click of save Right, so all the mobile numbers are dummy. Make sure you are also using the API. Don't enter your original mobile number. Just enter something dummy. Let's on click of save. You can see create employee method is there. And if you see the object, this is the object which we have sent. And in the response, we have got it true. 
and after the create employee you can see get all employees method is there so you can see the latest record created is available over here just like that we have created the we have done the save part just like that we have we can do edit and the delete part but as i have already covered the edit and the delete in the department list so you can do the same thing in the employee because i'm not going to repeat the same thing same kind of code will be there api is also there you can see create employee update employee and delete employee just on click of edit you need to integrate this employee this api get employee by id or the same data you have in the array also so either you can use the api on click of edit or you can use the data from the for loop now now we are going to do the rule based uh something like once user logged in this log off button also functionality which we have to do and we have three roles employee department head and the admin so based on that we are going to show and hide something so let's see the rules first so these are the three roles we have let's get it let's close everything now if you see the now bar if the role is let me just click on here if the role is department head right then only we will allow to see uh, employee department page because department head will have the what do we say authorization to create the new department and create the employee also any department head or or else we can add one more option let's say as a super admin you will only have the uh, what do we say uh, authorization to create new department and the employees let's make it super admin let's create a super admin first and we need the department also right so let's say super admin this is going to be department uh we are not going to select the department head as it let's save department created success and you are you are here you can see super admin is created now let's go to employee let's create a role let's create a user for the super super admins Super admins can be, let's say, HR or anything, whoever has the functionality to create the new department and the employees. So let's say Danish, or let's create a simple one, super underscore admin. This is going to be the name, contact number, just a dummy contact number, email ID, super admin, at the red gmail.com. Let's use dummy only. Mail two two three three four four. Select department. Okay, here the department is not coming because we have not created. Wait, let's just select design super admin. Let's click on save. Something is wrong. Let's check what blocked. Why is it saying it is blocked? on save employee okay 500 it is coming let's check internal server error contact number yeah i think mobile number one 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 two 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 one one save employee yeah so mobile number was not correct uh, no was not provided correctly now employee is created right you can see let's update the department head also super admin update oh hope spelling mistake was there let me just go to the database and create it as we haven't done the update thing I'm directly updating to the database. So super admin. Everywhere we have made the spelling mistake. So this is my email ID and password is it 223345. Now let's try to do the login. 
and we will implement the authentication authorization for the uh, using Authgard also. So this is my email ID. Password is two two three three four four. Now I'm log I'm logging in. Let's remove the data. Now I'm trying to log in with the super admin. On click of login, we will make the API call. And the data also we have got that data we will store in the local storage. So here you can see the current role is super admin. Now we will write the functionality like if the logged in role, logged in user role is super admin, then only we will show the employee and the department page. So let's write the code for that. Now the navbar is in my layout component. So let's go over here on the page load. We have already read the data and that is in the log data. Now this variable log data will have the data uh, sorry role also so employee so here we will add star ng if dot role now this anchor tag this li only visible if the role is super admin so let's copy that role this is the role and we will add it over here same like that department also let's just save and check currently we have logged we are logged in with the uh, super admin only so that oh it is not visible why okay we have got the error so since we have used the ngf so again common model we have to add just get uh, still because this is new so i'm i'm also not habitual Right, so now you can see employee and the department page is visible. Now on click of login, on click of logout, we need to write that functionality also. So at the end we have that logout button. So here, right, let's write the click event on logout. Let's create this function on logout. We have to navigate to the login page. Plus we have to clear the local storage data also. Right. So here, first we will create the local storage dot remove item. And the key name is nothing but the ticket data variable in which we have the data. And after that, we need to navigate it to the login page. So we are going to need prime uh, router service. So router, router. And here, after clearing the local storage, this dot router dot navigate by URL. And we have to navigate to the login page. So login route. Let's just save and check if we are so able to log in so if i press the login button now you can see we are able to log in right now on click of log off you can see we are successfully navigate to the login and if you check the local storage we don't have the data but still if we just click on the back button still we are able to navigate since we are not logged in right but if you know the url we are still able to go back this should not be possible unless user is logged in we should not have the access to access this page so to achieve this means if user is not logged in which uh, he should not have access to any of the page so to achieve this we have to implement the auth guard so let's go and implement the auth guard so guard file or guard folder we had created so let's create the let's create the guard that will be can activate guard can activate guard will be responsible to before loading the page, before loading the component, it will run, right? Means can activate, uh, like it is giving the permission. So ng generate guard, let's enter. It should ask like what kind of guard we need. Oh, sorry, I forgot the guard name. So auth, then it is asking like which guard you need. Can activate, can activate child, can, can deactivate and can match. So let's go with the can activate. So now here you can see can activate guard is there. Now here we simply need to write what do we say a functionality which will read the local storage. Now how do we know like user is logged in? Once user is logged in, we are storing the logged in user data into local storage. In your case, you can store the data in cookie or session storage also. But on the front end side, we need to store the somewhere the data that user is logged in. So here we have to first read the data. So constant local data is equal to local storage dot get item and we need to pass the key that is nothing but ticket data. 
if local data is equal to is equal to sorry let's say not equal to null if it is not equal to none we will return true let's check the else else in return let's try to return the false let's see what happens but normally i used to redirect to the login page from the auth guard but let's check how it work ah sorry guard is created but we need to add this guard to our route also right so before that adding route in the app config we need to add it in the provider section uh, how do we do that let me just find because in angular before angular version it was pretty simple let me just find that right so after we have created guard we just have to add the guard to the particular route so let's just add it to the dashboard page for now so it will we have created the can activate guard so here we need to write can activate now guards can be multiple so that's why we have to pass it pass it inside the array so our auth guard guard name so let's add the import now let's check it so if we are in the login page but if we know the url and if we try to type it manually so now you can see we cannot get anything but it is not loading the login page also right it is not loading the login page now it is loading so might be in the guard we have to ultimately redirect to the login page only so here let's inject router outlet how do we inject inject and we have to in inject router let me just see because we this is an arrow function so here we cannot what do we say create uh, we do not have the constructor so we cannot create the normal service object so let's just see uh, what we have to search so inject we have already imported so here you just need to create a constant variable let's say with the name router and here you need to use the inject method and here you need to pass what you are going to inject so router is what we need and now in else block we are going to use a router dot navigate by url whatever the methods we uh, used to get in the actual router that same only object we have created and we have to navigate to the login page so let's just save and check if we are able to successfully navigate to the login page so let's try to enter dashboard so you can see we are again redirect to the login page but now if not dashboard let's try to because currently we have added a can activate guard to the dashboard page only so let's try to in, uh, insert the employee url it will work because we haven't added the guard on the employee route so that will work so this is how the difference for this dashboard guard we have added the can activate guard so it will it will go to this it will read the local storage data even if it if it if it has the local data it will return true otherwise we are redirecting to the login page so that's why on the employee page we haven't added the guard so if user is still not logged in he is able to navigate right but in case of dashboard it is redirecting to the login page so now instead of adding it to the whole routes we have the parent so here you can add it let's just see now employee also will be work see now it has redirected to the login now let's try to log in now let's uh super admin we have already tried so let's try with chetan at the gmail one one two two three three so now i'm logged in with the normal role let's check the role okay role is empty let's try the let's try by adding the roles employee so we can see the chetan is nothing but an employee let's try to log out again one two two three three right same wrong credential password was incorrect one 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 okay password enter was incorrect one 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 
login success. So currently the role is employee only. Let's go application. So see, employee role is there. Now, that rule based thing we have done. If the role is employee, we are showing just the ticket and the new uh, tickets and the new ticket. And if the role is super admin, we are showing the admin and the employee. So based on the logged in role, we are showing some menus dependently. This, uh, this is nothing but what we have called as a role based authentication. Again, same thing you can implement in the guards also. There you can also write the same code. But I'm just going to skip that now. Now, next thing is the ticket part. Sorry, new ticket. First, we will create the new ticket thing. So this is the new ticket API, create new ticket. Let's see the object. So here you can see this is the object we have. Ticket ID is the primary key. Ticket number will be automatically generated. So you don't have to send it. Employee ID means logged in employee ID we need to send. We don't need to show the drop down and uh, employee will select. Whoever the employee is logged in, that will create the ticket. Then created date, we don't need to set it. Expected date also, it, we don't need to set it. It will, API will automatically add uh, after seven days deadline to the particular ticket. Severity, we have to add. Department ID also, we have to add. Completion date, this is also not needed. Assigned to also not needed. State, we don't need to pass. Request detail because state and everything will be uh, assigned from the backend. So let's create the object for this. Let's copy. Let's go to that site, convert JSON to TS. Let's open it. Let's paste our model JSON. This is the different model we have got. Let's copy. Now let's go to the API model.ts. Here we have to create the class of the particular ticket object. Export class new ticket. Right, so these are the properties we have. Let's just initialize also. You can see what are the properties we have in the new ticket object like that I have created the class and in the constructor we have initialized that also. So if you see assigned to is nothing but an ID to which use to which your employee ID this ticket is assigned. So that's why I'm initializing with zero date. I'm initializing with the new date department ID again and employee ID and the ticket ID I'm initializing with zero because the, those are nothing but number. After that we have to create the form. So next part is we have to create a new ticket. Now let's see the object. What do we have to send to create new ticket? So at the end, we have the create new ticket API. So here, if you see, we have to send the employee ID. Employee ID is nothing but logged in user ID. Whoever the employee is logged in, that ID we need to send. Severity, we can create a static dropdown with low, medium and high. Department ID like for which department we are raising the ticket. Then state. This state, actually, we don't have to send it on from the API side. It is going to be by default state will be unassigned. Then uh, once that department employee start working on the ticket, then it will be in progress like that. And the request detail, whatever the details we have to provide in that particular ticket. <clears throat> so since we had, we have created the new ticket component, but if, if we know like just some fields are there, like only four or five fields are there in the new ticket. So rather than using this component, I will do the same thing over here in the new tickets component. So let me just close everything. Tickets component, I will create the structure. So dot row dot call, let's say eight or let's make it 12. Why I will explain in each component, in each component, we are trying to accomplish the different UI, whatever we can, so that in a single project, we will cover as much as different approaches for the CRUD, so that you also can know like what are the various scenarios by which we can do the CRUD operation. So in the tickets component, we are going to uh, do uh, the same thing with model power. So here, then card, 
card header dot bg success now here let's say ticket now this component is going to be used to all the rules ticket list then we need card body and here we are going to show the various tickets we have created uh, now for ticket showing we can use the card only so as we have used the same thing in the employee to display the list i'm just going to copy paste that so this was the row let's copy this let's paste it over here now we just remove this let's remove the bindings also right like this so here first we need to open the model purple so let's go to the bootstrap uh, bootstrap 5 since we have installed the bootstrap 5 so we need the bootstrap 5 what do we say model pop up code so w3 school bootstrap and we need the model pop up code so let's go over here this is the basic code for bootstrap 5 model let's put it at the end and here let's say new ticket And in, in model body, we are going to have the form. Let's remove the remaining things. Now, on the button click, so now we had the card, right? So here again, we need to create one row column structure. Let me just create that row dot call six. And here we are going to add this label. And in remaining call six, I'm going to have a button. Plus BTN, BTN, SM, BTN primary. And here I will say new ticket. Now on click of this new button, we have to open the model pop. Let me just show you. My button is not visible. Okay, BTN. Let's add a text end class so that it will end, at, it will appear at the end. Right. Now on click of this new ticket, we have to open that model pop-up. So let's write the code for that. Now to open the model pop-up, we have so many different things. As Bootstrap 5 uh, initially supports the uh, JavaScript code, so you don't need to write the custom code. But obviously on the close button and everything, we are going to do some code. So that's why I'm uh, using the manual approach. So I'm just creating open ticket model function. Now on this button click, I'm going to call this function. Now in this function, we are going to select that particular ID and try to open it. So the model ID is, let's say, ticket model. This is my ID to the my, to my model, right? Now here we have to write const model is equal to document. dot get element instead of get, creating document dot get element you can create a view chat also but just to keep the video uh, what do we say on an easy level so that everyone can understand i'm using the normal javascript method and here we have to pass the model ids that is ticket model over here and we just have to add a null check like if model is not equal to null then we will open it. So model dot style dot display property is equal to block. We have to show block means we are just adding a dynamic CSS. And just like that, we need a close function also. So close model close. And here we will just add a CSS as none. And this close model ticket we have to add on this cross button. Click. Right, so let's just test if it is working fine. Let's file save all. Mm -hmm. 
now on click of new ticket you can see model pop-up is opening and now if i click on close that part of that pop-up is also getting hidden now here we have to design a form so let's just design a form pro call six label now first let's see the api what Employee ID, we are going to read from the local storage and then we are going to assign it means logged in user, logged in employee ID we need to send. Severity. So let's check, uh, select severity. And here we are going to have a drop down. So select class form select. And here we are going to have option. Let's say first is low. Medium. And high. Any, any option you can have. Doesn't matter. And one placeholder option we will take it with the value empty. Select. So our severity dropdown is done. After that, what do we need? So we need department ID, like for which department we are creating this ticket. So here we need to show the department dropdown. So before this, we will just add a dropdown. And in employee also, we have already created the employee dropdown. So let's make use of that code. So here you can see we have already done that. So I will just copy pasting the same code. Select department. And we need the API call also. So first we need to create the object of department service because the department in the department service we already had that API call. Let's add the input. After that, we are going to create this observable just like I'm copy pasting whatever we have did. So that we don't have to just waste time creating it. And in the constructor, we need to call this. Observable we need to add and the model also we need to import like that. So on the page load, we will get the data. Now it is giving error because we have to add the forms module and everything. So forms module and common module also we are going to need. So let's check if we are, no, some error is there. Let's check what is there. Okay, ng model error will be there. Let's just remove that for now because we have not created the object yet. Let's just see if drop down is coming properly or not. Yes, so drop down is coming. We need one option that will be static. So let's just copy this option and put it over here. So select department and the select severity is done. After that, what do we need? Is state also it is going to be automatic, right? From the API side, it is going to be created. Request detail. So just one text area. Why the error? No, forget it. So after this row, we are going to create one more row called 12. And here we are going to have a label. Enter your de ticket details. Just a text box or text area where user is going to employ is going to provide all the details, whatever, like what things they need and everything. Just like that, we are going to add in the, the text area. Let's say row three rows. Let's add a placeholder. Enter details. Now, just the simple form is there. First, employee is going to select the department. He will uh, select the severity of the ticket and he will enter mention the details what he need. After that, first we have to create the object. So let's go over there and let's copy this object. Now in the app model, we are not creating any, we are not creating all the variables with any, we have created the models and everything. So here I'm creating one more model. So export class new 
tick it. Let's remove these things. Let's replace this with semicolon number and this with string. And after that, we need to initialize things in the constructor. So this dot department ID, let's initialize with zero. Employee ID, let's initialize with zero. Request detail with empty as it's a string. Severity as in it's a string, so initialize with empty. And last one, state also with empty. We don't have to bind it. Duplicate identifier, we have created. Okay, new ticket, OBJ. I think in the last, sorry, I'm uh, I'm recording this in multiple videos. So I have changed the API. So previously this was the ticket object, but now it is this. So I only forget this, but this object, this ticket object we are going to use. So let's go to ticket component. Let's create the object now. Ticket OBJ colon this is equal to new ticket object. Let's add the import. Now this object we need to bind to our form. So on the first that is select department. Let's add ng model. Dot department id here we need to bind then severity so here instead of department id we have to bind the severity let's copy and the last one is text area with details request details that's it now here uh, beside the close button we will need the save button so instead of danger let's add a success one model dismiss let's remove this and here it will be create ticket now on this button click we are going to call one function so let's create that click on create ticket let's copy let's create the function for now now the API call is uh, object we have created that object we have bind to the form and on button click we have created one function also now let's go to the service now we have to create a uh, in employee service I will create I'm not going to create one more service like ticket service because we don't have that much API call so here only I'm going to create so the function name create new ticket the object will be ticket new ticket object Let's check the API call, create new ticket. Now the API URL here, it, we have we are using the constant file. So let's go over here. New underscore ticket. And the value will be create new ticket, whatever the API endpoint name is. Comma. Now in here, instead of create employee, new ticket is there remaining things will be same now into ticket component we have to write the api call so first we have to create the object of employee service so because there we have created the service function employee service so here this dot emp service dot date new ticket and for this we need to send the objects so ticket object and we need to write the subscribe API response model. Here we need to write if res dot result. If it is true, then we will show like alert ticket created success. And in else, we will show just the error.
आर ई एस मैसेज राइट लेट जस्ट टेस्ट इफ यू पी आई इफ टेक इट इज गेटिंग क्रिएटेड सक्सेसफुली और नॉट देन वी विल डिस्कस लाइक द गेट ए पी आई कॉल वॉट थिंग्स वी हैव टू डू ओवर देयर नाउ इफ आई क्लिक ऑन न्यू टिकेट लेट सिलेक्ट द डिपार्टमेंट लेट सिलेक्ट लेट से आई एम रेजिंग अ टिकेट फॉर द इट इज कमिंग टू टाइम्स लेट मी जस्ट चेक वन मोर टाइम here the form control class is remaining so let's just add that class form hyphen control let me just check the database departments are not coming proper so apis are free so someone must have added the wrong department let me just change it properly ticket master department this is the table which we are using ua it developer yeah here departments are coming proper but here it is not coming proper let's say why Why it is saying the old one only? Because let me just uh, log in with the super admin again. Sorry, so my bad. in department service i had the wrong uh, constant name instead of get employee i need get department so that's why i corrected it now you can see we will get the proper departments now so here let's uh, to just see like uh, what data we have we need to raise a ticket where proper employee is also there let's say get department let me just find it properly so oh, i have just find out so in hr department uh, employees also there so let's create a ticket for this hr department so let's go over here let's select the department as hr let's select severity as low i need let's say he is asking for pay slip for the current month january month now on click of create ticket we should see one api call on click of create you can see one api call is there and it is saying like created the ticket created success also let's check the api response so here you can see and the ticket number is 78 is also there uh once more you can see ticket number we have not seen the ticket number but here you can see ticket number is automatically generated state is also there by default when someone creates a ticket its state will be undefined sorry on a side now the ticket is there but we i am logged in as an employee so i need to see what are the tickets i have created so let's check the api which i have get tickets created by emp id let's check my emp id employee id oh we have not sent the employee id because i have not added the validation so still ticket is created so you can see employee id is not created because on the page load also i i discussed but i have not sent it right so now here we need to read the local storage data and whatever the employee id is there that we need to assign into our ticket object so let's write that code in the layout component we already had done that so let me just copy this into ticket component in the constructor i am writing that code now in ticket object dot employee id we have parsed that and dot employee id same thing will be over here now let's try one more time now this time data will be going proper new ticket let's write to hr let's with minimum need pay slip for december month this is the ticket ticket detail i'm adding let's click on create ticket 
ticket created successfully. Now, if we check, you can see employee is going as three. Now, let's check this API if we are getting the tickets created by this particular employee. Oh, it is saying error. Employee ID three, execute. Error is five hundred. Why get tickets created by EMP ID? EMP ID is equal to three, which we have sent. Let's check employee is present or not. Okay, so I think the employee ID is not present. Let's me try to log in again. Let's try to log in with the existing employee. Ticket. Employees are there. Why it is saying employee ID doesn't exist? Department is not there. Got it. So I might have deleted the department. Let's add a 98 to this department. I haven't added the foreign key yet. That's why the data mismatch will be there. Let's try again. Three. Still, it is 500 only. So I need to check. Just give me some time to check this. So in stored procedure, something was wrong. So I have corrected it. Now if we click, if we pass the employee ID 3, so we will get, we will get the tickets created by this particular employee. So currently only one ticket is there. Let's try creating one more. Let's select economical department. Let's select no need quarterly report let's create it All right it's taking so much time yeah then let's try to execute again now we should see the two tickets so you can see now we can see the tickets created by this particular employee now we just have to integrate this let's add this into our constant file the api endpoint so let's go to the constant file the constant name will be get tickets created by emp and we need to pass this constant over there then method name along with the parameter now in the employee service now we have to create the get api so i'm just copy pasting this it will go over here get tickets by emp and for this function we are going to pass the employee id so it will need a parameter so emp id data type will be number and now instead of get employee it will be get tickets created by emp id plus EMP ID we need to bind so that dynamic URL will be formed along with EMP ID. Now this function we have to call on the page load. So in the tickets component, let's implement the on init. Let's implement. And once we do that, we need to implement and join in it also. Let's create a function get tickets created by EMP. Now here this dot employee service dot get tickets created by EMP ID and here we need to send the employee ID. So employee ID nothing but this. So this I will send it over here. Dot 
subscribe. The response is obviously response model, API response model, then arrow function, and whatever the tickets we get, whatever the data we get from this API, that we need to store it. So let's create one more variable, tickets list colon. Let's create the object. So this is the object we are going to get. This is, I think, compared contact number. Let's check the model we already had created. Oh, no, here some data was not present. Let's add contact number. String. Then we have employee name, department name is also there. String. This is just the old model I have created. We were not using it, so I'm using it now. Data type string. And the last one is assigned to employee ID. All right, let's initialize these properties. So this dot assigned to EMP is equal to empty. Contact number is equal to empty. Get to employee is equal to empty. Right. Now this object, instead of new ticket, let's rename it ticket list. This way we'll add it over here and it is going to be array. Let's initialize that with empty array. Let's add the import also for this. Now whatever the data we get from this API that we will store into this variable, res.data. And this function we have to call on the page load. So on ng on init, we will trigger it. Now whatever the data we get that we got into store, we have stored into ticket list. So this we will use on the card to iterate. So this was the card. So here on call four, we have to integrate it. So star ng for let ticket of ticket list. Instead of this, you can use at the rate for also. There also we have track by in ng for also we have track by. So same thing, right? Now here we have to show the ticket uh, created by name or let's in the card header, we will show the ticket number. So ticket dot ticket number we will show over here. Then <clears throat> what do we say? What number, what data we are getting? Current state also we can show. So state, then what else is there? Contact number we already know because I am the logged in employee. So I don't need to show the contact number. Department name, like to which department I have raised the ticket. So here I will show ticket dot department name. Then created date when it was created. So this will I will show over here. Ticket dot created date. It's a date. So I will add the date pipe with format DD MMM -Y -Y. Then what else we need? Currently, it is not assigned because we have just created a ticket. So it is not assigned to anyone. So expected in date. By default, you can see on the 22nd we have created. So by default, uh, API from API side, it has added 29 as an expected end date. So let's show this also. Uh, instead of over here, let's show that. Create date first over here. And expected date over here. So that date will be in a single row. And here we will show, sorry, this should be over here. And here we will show the department name. What else we can show? State already we have shown. Severity is missing. So ticket dot severity. Let's save. We haven't saved the other file, so let's save this. Now on the page load, we should see the tickets. The error is not on. Save all. 
see on the page load we have done the api call and you can see the tickets created by us here unassigned is there why we have shown oh here we need to show the ticket number so here you can see we can we can see the ticket number uh, start date expected end date let just uh, instead of icon now we should show the label so label start created date and the remaining was the next was end date sorry expected completion date so created date was this expected end date was this let's add a br tag So the date will come in the next line right like this now we have to show the assigned name also now if you see the api if the request is not assigned to anyone yet so was the state is unassigned so we can show the state because currently we have not shown the state anywhere. So after this, let's create a row dot column six ticket status. State, we just add a BR tag and here we will show ticket state. So ticket dot state. Now one more column I'm copy pasting. If ticket is assigned here, I will be uh, showing the name. So assign to, but here we need to add the condition. So that is if assigned to is not null. So if you can see here assigned to employee is coming as null because it is not assigned to it. So ticket dot assigned to if not equal to null then only we will show the assigned to so let's just save and check so that's it everything we have done so you can see it is unassigned and just add a padding so we have created the ticket also and that ticket we have shown over here also now this ticket first as as we have discussed in the starting like once employee created the ticket for the particular department that ticket will go to the head of that department then he will assign it to someone else now the same component we will use for the department head also so let's check the department head of for this particular department so let's select uh, let's try for the hrr so hrr was having 110 id and the department head id was 90 let's check the 90 90 was 90 employee id and the head was uh, wiki so let's copy this now let's try to log in with the department head now we are doing the actual phase where the processing will be and whole flow you can understand password is one two three four five six login now logged in success so now in the dashboard we can see the department head is logged in let me just close all first. Now, if in the here also we need to write some coding, like if dip, uh, what do we say, local data. So in local data, here I'm just adding a check if local data dot role. Oh, so we have not parsed that. Let me just create one more variable logged data colon any and whatever the data we have got in the from the local storage that i will assign it over here this i will put over here and this i will use it over here dot rule is equal to is equal to let's see what data we have got in the local storage for this particular user 
what is the role oh so sorry in gate api we are not getting the role so let me just modify because in gate api we need the role right based on that role we are going to do some api changes so the login api let me just change the api quickly Sorry, I was checking something else. So here in the ticket data, we have got role as a department head. So let's write the code for that. If the logged in role is department head, we need to call another API. Just like that, again, LCP will be there with if logged in role is employee. And if the logged in role is employee, we will trigger this API. Otherwise, instead of writing code over here, we will write that code in ng only because from here we are triggering the API code. So this will go over here. If the logged in role is employee, means normal employee. So we will call this function that is get tickets created by EMP ID. But if the logged in role is department head, so we have another API, which is let me just get you that API get new tickets so this is the api which will get us the new tickets created for the particular department if we logged in with the department head so here we need to send the department head employee id so the department head id was 90 let's try that 90 over here execute so you can see we have got two tickets created. One one was one was created by super admin and one is created by Chetan. So this API we have to call. So let's copy this. Let's add it in the constant. Get new tickets. And this will go over there. Now, in service also, we have to create one API call. So just like that, I will just copy it. And here, get new tickets. Get new tickets. Now, this function we have to call. So just like in ticket component, just like this function, we have to create one more function that will be get new tickets new unassigned tickets that will make more sense and here we need to pass the logged in employee id so logged in employee id uh, uh, we are getting that in the log data so this we can use over here and whatever the data we are going to get that we we will store in the ticket list only so this function we will call in the first if statement. If logged in role is department head, then we will call this. So now if we save, now first we need to log in with the particular 90 email ID. Yeah, that we have already done. So in the network, if we go to the tickets page, no, so again that employee, why let's check department head is there. Let's try to find save all. We should see the other API call, but let's see why it is not happening. Um, tickets component. Let's add it over here. Let's reload. So current the logged in role is department head. So obviously it should go over here. Okay, so I think we have not changed it over here. Same API call is there. So here, get new tickets API call should be there. Now it will call the perfect API call. So you can see two tickets are there which are unassigned. Now, if the logged in role is a department head, then we should show the assign button. So this will go over here and ticket state is there now assign to instead of this assign to we will show the employees for his particular department because then he will assign it 
So here I'm creating one drop down. We don't need the NGF. Plus from select. In this drop down, we are going to show the all the employees of his department only. Whatever the department he represents, what are the employees working for him? That department, that employees we will show it over here. I'm just selecting option. Now we need to load the employees for the particular department. So we have one API for that. So if we go at the top, get employees by department ID. So what was the department? Uh, department number one one ten. So let's check that. Try it out one one zero. Now with this API, we should get all the employees working for this department. So here you can see only two employees are there, Anita, Anita and Anuridha, which are working for the 110 department. Now this API call we need to make. So let's copy. Again, we have to go to the, go to the constant. <clears throat> Get employees by department. This will go over there. Now here in the employee service first we need to make that API call function. Get employee by department. So this will be department ID. Get employees by department ID and this department ID we have to send it over here. Now in ticket component, we need to create one more function. Get department employees. And here we need to send the department ID. So department ID we have got in the local storage. Let's check the local storage. So here you can see the department ID, whatever the department this particular logged in user is. So this dot log data dot department ID we need to send. So DPT ID. Let's create one more variable to hold the department employees. DPT employee list colon employee model. Whatever the response we get that we will store into this variable. Now this function get the department employees should be called if the role is department head only. So here, or we need to, yeah, only here only. Now, whatever the data we have got that we are storing into this variable. Now this, I will bind it over here. Select employee. And here, option star ng for let emp of department please then value we need to bind dynamic emp dot employee id and in here we need to show the employee name so emp dot employee name we have to show and this the ticket let's say in the that particular api we are going to get the assign to employee id or not assign to okay so here you can see we are not only we are getting the tickets which are new so assign to property is not coming over here but we need assign to id over here because that's only Mm -hmm. Okay, so for now, let's click on select employee will be there. Let's just save and check till now. Then I will explain the next flow. Now, here you can see we have two tickets which are in currently in the unassigned state. Now, if I select any employee, I'm not getting the data. Why is it? Let's check one more time. Is it not saved on? Saved on. 
So on the page load, we okay. Here it is something is wrong. Why we have percent twenty get employees by department? Somewhere space might be there. So let's check where. Yeah, here it was a space. If you get some space now, so it will be replaced by percent twenty. So then, yes, now you can see. Now you can see over here. These are the various employees working in this particular department under under the logged in user wiki. Now, so let's say we have to assign this ticket to particular employee. Let's say I want to assign it. So we have an API. So let's check that API. Assign request. So this is the API which uh, allow us to assign the particular API, particular ticket to the particular employee. So this is the post API. This is the object. So let's go to over here. In the employee service, I will create one more API call. Because this is the this is the API which we have to use to assign it, assign the ticket. So let's just execute. I need just the URL. So I'm just clicking it. So assign ticket. So let's go to constant assign ticket colon assign ticket. Ticket. Now in the Employee service again. I will create the API call. Assign ticket. Here we have to use assign ticket and we need to send the object. Object I'm keeping it as any, just two fields are there. I'm not creating a model and everything. Now once we change the drop down on the employee change, we need to call that API with the selected employee. So here, change API I'm writing, uh, assign EMP function I'm creating. And here I will send dollar event dot target dot value let's try i just need to get the selected employee emp id number let's add a debugger first to check like employee id we are getting or not then we will write the api call object is possibly none 43 where it is for you three You added the null check still it is giving value does not exist on type element target let's just try to send the event only then here we will find event is not assignable to type number so here instead of any let's make it any let's find it now now let's open the console and we have to check on the drop down change if we are able to send the employee id so let's select Isha and here we are getting the complete event, event dot current target, event EMP ID dot target dot value. Yeah, so you can see we are getting the selected employee ID. So this we have to use const now. So instead of creating this small object, because we just have two fields in the assign, right? So I can create the object in the function only with the local variable constant obj is equal to this and assign to this, we have to use the employee ID, how we have got that from the event. So emp.target.value. So this will over here and ticket ID we need to send. So that, that we have second parameter. we know that this is going to be number and once we call this function here also we need to pass the ticket id so ticket dot ticket id we need to send like that 
and once the object is created this ticket id we have to assign it over here so object is complete now we have to make this dot employee service dot assign ticket we need to pass the object so object is nothing but this local object and dot subscribe result colon api response you can add an if statement if result dot result is true then we can show alert like ticket uh, ticket assigned successfully and in else we will show the error whatever we get from the apis are only so alert res dot message will be over here let's just save and check everything Right now, if we let's say this ticket, which is 31, let's try to assign it to Isha. So now ticket assign successfully is done. So here you can see in the payload, we have got the assigned to is 34, 50, 105, and ticket ID is also there. Now, if we refresh, this ticket won't come here because this is not, this is already assigned. So only one ticket, which is not assigned, it will come. So let's refresh. So only you can see one ticket is there, which is not assigned. So because we have called the API, that is new ticket. So new ticket API will return only tickets which are not assigned yet. So like this, again, some things are remaining. Like if we logged in with the particular employee, which is having the department role. So that for that role, let's say if we log in with Isha. So Isha should see the tickets assigned to her that we will complete next. And here we need to create one more button if we have to if I have to see all the tickets which are where what is the status and everything so for that here I will add a button that is get all tickets so there we will show all the tickets so but I need to write that API first so I will write that API and I will continue that part again So we have assigned one ticket to Isha. Now let's try to log in with Isha. So she could see the as ticket assigned to her. So let's check the login detail of Isha. So this is the email ID. Let's try to log off email ID. The password is 1111. Login, login success. Now let's check the data in the local storage. For this application, we have created three roles. Now the role of Isha is admin department employees, means she is the one who is going to work on the tickets created by the normal employee. So in the tickets component, because one component only we are using, <coughs> sorry. So one component only we are using for all the different roles. So here again, we need to add one more check. So I'll zip if this dot local data dot role equal to equal to this role, then we have to call another ticket, which is let me just show you on the swagger that that ticket, uh, I mean that role will be get assigned ticket by get assigned tickets by EMP ID. So currently EMP ID is 105. So let's check. If this API is working, 105 we need to send, 105. Right, so you can see one ticket was assigned to her, so that ticket we are able to see. So this is the API which is, uh, which is, uh, which is getting the tickets assigned to that particular employee. So let's copy this and we need to put it into the constant get assigned tickets 
let's create function in the employee service just like this get assigned tickets and here we need to send the emp id here get assigned tickets and here we need to send the employee id now in the service we have created the api call function now in the component we need to create that api call just like the above one so let's copy paste this now this function will get assigned tickets so let's copy let's call this function over here so in all the three api call let's say it is a new assigned ticket get tickets by im variable or get assigned ticket we are storing the data into the same variable so we don't have to create the uh, separate variable to store the list because same data we are getting now let's just check we should see the tickets assigned to her continue in the network tab we should see tickets no still that api is missing okay here also we need change get assigned tickets and here we need to send the logged in role data so logged in object dot emp id let's say one more time now here you can see we have successfully call the gate assigned tickets by the API ID and this is the ticket we are got so now if the role is what do we say admin employee so we don't need to show this drop down right so let's hide that so let's copy this now on the drop down we need to hide that so star ng if so now this will be visible. This select dropdown will be visible only if the role is super admin. So role is, sorry, department head. So this will go over here. So only the select dropdown, select employee dropdown only be visible to this particular role. So let's just save. Right. Now, once I see the assigned ticket to myself, I will be start working on it. So we have one API which we have to call on the start ticket let me show you that start ticket and this is again post api oh, this should not be the post api this should be the get api but let it be so i need to send the id so the ticket id i need to send right so ticket id what we need to send so let's create this uh, constant and api call at first so start ticket. Even if it is a post API, we don't have an object, but you can send the empty object since I have created this with the post. So again, we have to go to the constant. Start. Ticket. Just like that close ticket also we are going to need. So I'm just copy pasting. Let's see the API call. Close ticket. Instead of start, it will be close. Now, in the employee service also we need to create that This is post API, so let's make it post. But we don't have any object, but we, we have to send the object, so we can send an empty object like this. But in the URL, we need to send that employee ID. So start ticket. And here we will be sending the ticket ID. So just like that over here, this will be close ticket. Here, start ticket API call entry and the ticket ID. And this will be close ticket. Right? So API call is also ready. Now here, we just need to create functions. So just like that, I will create the function because we are going to get the two and the false. 
So this will be start ticket. Only ticket ID parameter will be there. And this will be start ticket. And here we will send the ticket ID. Ticket status change. And just like that, close ticket will be there. This will be close ticket. And here will be close ticket. Now just make attention. Uh, two functions are there. Start ticket and close ticket. Now, over here, we have hide this, right? But we will create one more column six. And this div will be only visible for the admin department employee role. Let me just add that role over there. Admin department employee. One more div I have created, which will be visible only for the department role. And now here, we need to check the status. I'm creating buttons over here. Plus, BTN, BTN, success. And just like that, one more button that will be danger. It will be close. Ticket. And this will be start ticket. And now either of the one button will be visible. Now that will be condition based. So condition based as in if ticket dot state star ng if so if we see the data current data ticket state is assigned. So if the ticket state is assigned means it is assigned state. But if it is in progress, then we have to show the close button. So that will be in progress. So that is like, let me just get the proper word. Start ticket. Once we start the ticket, we make the ticket state with in progress. <clears throat> and one more button we will be show once it is closed. Okay, so ticket we are already showing. So not necessary. And now on click of start button, we have to call that API. The first function API call we need to call that is start ticket and we need to pass the ticket ID. So this and we need to pass the ticket ID. So ticket dot ticket ID because the same for loop is going over there, right? Like that. Let's copy, let's paste, and let's drop this. It will be close. So let's just save and check. Now, if you can see, current ticket status is assigned. So that's why I'm getting the, uh, what do we say, button as start ticket. Now, once we start the ticket, again, we need to load the data. But we cannot load, we, we cannot call the engine on it again. So let's remove this code and put it inside load grid function and this function we will call on the ng on it i will explain why because once you start in the close ticket again you need to call this function so if you put this code in the ng on it you cannot initiate again ng on it. so i will copy this and put it over here so that i can see the latest status over here also let's just save and check So currently I just have one ticket. So I will just start on that. Okay, we have got error because in the URL you can see start ticket hyphen is missing. So that's because in the constant I might have forgot. Right, so we need to just get me the ID proper. ID, ID only. So it should be like this. Let's save and check it one more time. Now it should work fine. Now if I click on start ticket, you can see ID is also proper ticket status change. And now you can see once we start the ticket, it is the button, next button is coming as close ticket. Now if I close on the ticket, that ticket will get closed. But before that, 
so this ticket was created by okay here we need to show the tickets created like who has created the ticket so yes employee name is get we are getting so let's show the employee name also mm, after this dot row dot call six let's show ticket dot employee name and we, after that we will show the ticket contact number also created by employee oh something is employee name is also there let's just ticket i just need to change the model data this dot employee name empty now i can use the employee name let's just save and check <clears throat> Super admin is coming, but mobile number is not coming. Why? Mm -hmm. So from API side, I'm not getting the mobile number in the get all ticket. Okay, so let it be. So employee name is coming because this ticket was created by super admin. Now let's try. So the flow is like employee has created ticket that ticket got to the department head department head then assign that ticket to Isha then in Isha's login we can see the ticket assigned to us then I can start on that ticket work once I complete the working on that ticket then I can close it also. So if I click on close ticket I make that API called ticket status change now if I refresh. I cannot see that button because ticket status is closed not the start button not the close button I am able to see. So this was the complete flow where I can uh, if I log in with the employee I can create the ticket that then ticket view will go to the department head department head will assign that ticket to particular employee of his department then that particular employee if logged in then he can see the assigned ticket to him then he can start working on that once he done working on that he can close this again so basic flow is completed now just the uh, work remaining is the dashboard so according to the rules we should show the different different dashboard like if i am the department employee i should see the assigned ticket open ticket close ticket like that if i am the employee who can create the ticket i should see the total number of tickets i have created total in progress ticket unassigned ticket like that and if i am the department head i should see the new tickets ground and the all everything uh, the dates and the date but the dashboard tickets are not ready yet so, so that's why i'm skipping that part but once you see that video once you see this video you will see the ticket uh, that apis also over here at the top all the dashboard apis so you can perform that will be just the gate api you can just get the data and you can show the data according to the different roles so that's it with the current video I hope the whole flow is easy to you. Just the last part was somewhat difficult, but the uh, remaining part is very easy. Just the basic current operation we have did. So that's it with the current video. Please do like and subscribe.